Welcome back for another epic video, stone versus wood, and of course, some resin. When you're using a table saw, you got to be careful and watch out for your fingers. So here I'm using my homemade veggie slat to cut all the segments, each ring will contain 12 little segments, and the whole project will contain 4 different rings glued together to form a vase. Once I have all the rings cut, then I will begin to glue the individual pieces together to form a nice 360 degrees circle, hopefully. As long as you get the angles right, you don't need too much clamping force because they will nicely line up with some gentle squeeze out. So I'm only using some rubber band to hold the segments together. Then I will repeat the same process with each and every rings. And then once the glue dried, I can just give a nice gentle sand on both sides before we can begin to glue this together. I'm using a coarse glue paper like 80 grit ish. And can you see what I see? And yeah, this is a new wood turning lathe from Axminster, the AP508WL. What a sexy name. And just like what rich people do with their boat, I thought I need to Christian my lathe with a wooden stick, but pine turned out very solid. So I had to go to my other friend, which is MDF, and that turned to be very stuff as well. But here we are. The light is Christian, and now we are ready to crack on turning this vase. As per my future plans, I really want to turn some really big pieces, moving into some huge segmented projects as well, some really one of a kind bowls and, and vases. So this is partially the reason I upgraded. Also, this comes on a solid cast iron legs, which just allows me to turn the bigger pieces without any wobble, like I had previously on my smaller, smaller lathes on the self-made stand. Hopefully this will avoid some of the frustration I had. I will keep relatively a thick wall thickness at this stage because I know I will do the carving on the outside, so I just don't want to carve all the way through. And here I decided to go a little bit uh, freestyle in terms of marking out the grooves and for the first attempt it turned out really well, but then I sent it again and made a new one. I didn't film it, but that's how it turned out. I like this design a little bit better since obviously there is less tones to use and also the lines was spread a little bit more evenly between um, each other, so I went with this design. And ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you Starbond Superglue, who was kindly enough to sponsor this week's project video and send me some really incredible stuff. Cheers, guys. And check this out, the new product, Turkish Stones. You can do this for inlay or any sort of craft projects. And today we will be using some thick CA glue from Starbond with the accelerator to speed up the process and of course we will be utilizing the stone inlays. 
And did you know Starbond offers shelf life guarantee with 100% free replacement if the glue goes bad? Who else does that? And also, if you scan the little QR code on top of the packaging, that will lead you Starbond's guided instructions on how to use CA glues in different industries by professionals with different backgrounds. And one of my favorite things about Starbond, once I use the applicator, it will not turn the glue white compared to some of the other brands. Once you apply the accelerator, for some reason, it will react very strongly and turn the glue into some whitish, bubblish thing. Well, Starbond doesn't do that. And if you feel you want to get going and gluing, then head over to their website, link down below in the description and use my 10% off codes to gain a little discount. How cool is that? Since I didn't have the right uh, plastic ball or, or, or pot to use this for my mold, you are about to experience one of the most sophisticated mold I have ever built. Yes, I'm being sarcastic. And of course, if it's a new workshop, it means a time to change and retire my old scale and replace it with a brand new one. At this stage, I could only pray this mold will hold the resin without any leaks and after using a number of sticks of hot glue to secure the molds, it was ready to go into the pressure pot for overnight curing. And luckily, I only had some minor leaks, which I was able to fix with some uh, more hot glue. And then it was ready to go on a bandsaw, start rough shaping before it can go back onto the wood turning lathe. And now the only thing is left is to remove the resin and as you can see here some of the hardwood sapili already revealing and uh, it was just a matter of time slowly working my way down to the bottom and removing all the resin. I didn't really know what to expect because some of the stall inlay were sticking out a little bit but I was quite confident the carbide bits will kind of cut through the stones and that's exactly what happens. I could really feel it when the stone hit the carbide bits, but all in the state, it just cut through like hot knife to butter. Since I use carbide bits to cut through aluminium and brass, I was kind of expecting this should cope with the stones relatively well. Ascending from 120 grits all the way till 3000. When I get to the 1000 mark, I was switching over to some uh, water sending, applying a small amount of water at a time to keep the resin nice and cool. And uh, the final stage is ready to apply a little bit of a polishing compound, which will really bring out the shine. Usually when I do the polishing, this is when I really ramp up the speeds and normally polish it around um, 2.5, 3000 RPM, which is definitely a lot more than I do turning. Here I carefully removing some of the scrap wood led before and watching out my fingers, which was probably not a necessary task since the pine and the sapili wood also very soft. So literally this ascending took me less than a minute um, and using some more Starbond super glue to 
secure my emblem. Hope you enjoyed this week's project video and see you back next week for a festive inspired project.